Chaplin decides 2023. Now, in the life cycle of Mama Saloon, for four years and six months, Kamara and Vandy will gladly eat from the same pot. Mabinti and Samai will happily borrow Ogiri from each other's kitchen. But once the election season comes around, suddenly the nation remembers who is who, from where, and supports what. A study into the root cause of this peculiar phenomenon has been the premise of the Tumara National Dialogue that um, Osiwa is supporting. Over the last one year, the platform has been to both Kenema, McKinney, Kono, and Freetown. The concerns and suggestions of everyday Sierra Leoneans have been collected and collated and will be fully available on Facebook. Tonight, from the home of all things credible, balanced, and unfiltered, we will close the loop by taking the opinions of the citizens straight to the leaders in an attempt to ensure concrete resolutions come out of the national dialogue and that we all play our part to make Salon better for we all tomorrow. My name is Samia Wise Bangura, and this is AYV on Sunday. All right, good evening, and a very warm welcome to AYV on Sunday here on AYV television on Channel 33 on ES TV, Channel 399 on radio, FM 101.7, and on Facebook, AYV News um, Facebook page. We encourage you to always be part of the conversation here. Drop your questions, drop your comments there, but please, we always admonish you to tailor your messages to the issues being discussed. And um, as always, we bring people who are in touch with the issues we discuss here. Tonight, I have the pleasure of um, having Femi Claudius Cole, 2018 presidential candidate for the Unity Party and acting chair of the Consortium of Progressive Political Parties. Good evening. Good evening, Samuel. Always a pleasure. I have the national coordinator for the um, Tumara Saloon, Salia Fawundu Jr. Um, Salia, good evening and welcome to wake, um, AYV on Sunday. I wanted to wake up so early. Thank you very <laughs> much, Samuel. Thank you very much. All right, from the Opposition All People's Congress Party, I have Alfred Minkai Lukruma. Alfred, good evening and welcome. To good the evening, show. delighted to be here as always. All right, from the ruling Sierra People's Pal um, Party in Parliament, I have the Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte. Um, good evening and welcome to the show, Honorable. Good evening, thank you. All right, um, interestingly, there, there are concerns, there are things that civilians those concerns happen to be the same, whether it's from Kenema or Putloko, whether it's from Makeni or Bo, Fritong or Falaba. But let me just establish a context or the premise here. I'm going to start off with you, Salia. Just give us, or put this for us into context, this, um, this indeed business for make Salon better tomorrow. First of all, what, what is it all about? So the National Dialogue Series tomorrow yeah. was created as a complement to good governance. We believe that citizen participation is indispensable for good governance. What we found out is that a lot of citizens wanted their voices to be heard, but they were talking to a straight wall. We wanted to create that loop where citizens create issues, we talk about the solutions, and we bring them directly to key decision makers all over the country and hear their feedback, and we present that back to the people. So that is the premise. The premise was to bring people from all over Sierra Leone. We did that in the pilot right here. And then we were, the pilot was so successful that we went to, five, uh, to four places in the provinces, and we did that as well. We got people from a wide, uh, wide works of life, from different people, uh, journalists, students, civil society, uh, even a musician, a musician or two, you know, different people from different walks of life, and we got them to precisely come out and ask for their primary concerns. And we found out that despite um, them being from different locations and different walks of life, primarily they're talking about the same things. So the same things is affecting all Sierra Leoneans, and that's what we wanted to make sure that we find, we find a way to bring these issues directly to key, key decision makers on their behalf. Interesting, and as you say that, so what, what we're going to do tonight, we're just going to premise every um, conversation on a clip. So we're going to start off with, um, there are four issues raised by Sierra Leoneans, um, 
um, they, 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 they talked about corruption, inclusion, law and order, and patriotism. So we're going to start off with corruption. Let's listen to what Sierra Leoneans think about corruption. What are the problems? How do we address the menace of corruption? And then we'll come to, I'll then bring the conversation to the leaders in the studio to see how we can all come together and find um, a solution to the problems. Uh, anything starts from the, the beginning. Okay. It starts from the training, the training school. We're saying they will train the military, or even we, from all the younger one, and then if we begin train with us, let we know exactly say salon can number one. Okay. You have to be honest. Even picking where you born, picking it. You begin allow you take this two sweet, you give this, then you give this one. You hide the other one, you give the daddy. Mm -hmm. Next uh, way, the other one I don't go, you take them back again. You don't begin learning to corruption or to do bad. Exactly. You go continue for good. But I think uh, for the purpose of this discourse, I'll focus on the, the absence of a national agenda. In the sense that uh, our development has not been stable or sustainable simply because, as a nation, we do not have a national agenda. Party A will come in, bring in what they think they want to achieve in the next five years, and when Party B comes in, we start to condemn that these people are not serious, let's, that, let's do something differently. So most times, the challenge becomes, uh, the challenge is that uh, we are not able to get a holistic development plan. So what we need now as a nation, Let's go back to that point, where we will have a national agenda. In the next 10 years, as a nation, this is what we want to achieve. Lack of monitoring. Big government is spent, some signing money that the government is spent on, on necessary money that they spend. Because we're going to see no head, no tail. Just to spend money without no monitoring, nobody not doing for monitor. If this project they happen, or this project didn't happen, go to the side, go to Tomago now. What's the what you say? Tomabo. Tomabo. The Tomabo. How many billions will government all spend to that uh, in that place? Then? Mm -hmm. okay. If then they buy one cup of rice, five, five, five mil. Where are the old? There are five thousand. One cup of rice. Tomabo. Inside Tomabo town. Wow. Tomabo. What would they expect? Say, and by that time now, and then for the dewy food that cost to the type of money they spend. All right. Um, those are Sierra Leoneans, and um, those views they expressed corruption. I'm going to start off with you, Femi. Um, looking at, for example, what they mentioned, that corruption does not choose color and how it hinders the development of the nation. They cited the Tomabo Rice Project, which everyone is aware of. ACC is also investigating corruption in that. And so what comes out of the, these civil unions is that we see a lot of wasteful spending. So how then do we ensure that we bring the people along when we make these decisions, when we um, sponsor, when we fund national development, so the people will be able to monitor this, um, this development and contribute to its meaningful, um, to get meaningful desire at the end of the day. I actually loved listening to them because I think they hit the nail on the head. The first person that spoke, spoke about development, that we don't have a national agenda that everybody comes and toes the line. Right. And I think that person who gave that first opinion was thinking the way I am thinking, mm -hmm. that before we take care of the peripheral issues, we have to build a solid foundation. And with a solid foundation, you can then build on top of it. Mm -hmm. And when we look at they spoke about unnecessary spending. They're talking again about institutions being weak. Mm. And that's, and your, your, the information you sent to me, you mentioned um, consolidating our peace. Right. And these issues that they're raising, those are the pillars that can be used to build our peace. I don't believe we're at the point where we're actually consolidating right now because everything seems to be falling apart around us. And um, before we came on set, I was um, speaking with Mr. Salia here, getting a feel for what mm -hmm. his organization did. And it's fantastic that they're actually having the dialogue direct from the people. 
And when we say it, they say it's politics. But when we're hearing that the people themselves are saying it, it means there needs to be action. And what are the bedrock of our peace? What, what can we build on top of when we have a judiciary that is non-functioning, we have a police that is partial, we have uh, um, people going hungry, people not being able to afford a place to live, they can't afford water, they can't afford anything. There are no jobs. So what's the foundation on which we can then build? We now have to really do an introspection. Is, are, are our leaders leading? Are the government governing? Because somebody said about wasteful spending. And what did we see? We saw the, uh, the, the Auditor General being put on suspension. So who's monitoring who? We asked the question. You know, so those are key issues. And I'm glad that they approached it that way. Mm. That these are foundational issues. So as you talk about how do we consolidate the peace, um, Femi, it goes back, for example, I mean, four years, six months, we, we would leave us one people. I mean, you would see, I mean, the, 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 the very surnames people think are always at Logaid. You would see, um, I mean, Kamara and Vandy, they would eat from the same pots, the same pan. It's okay. It's normal. And that's a cellion we know. That's a cellion we want to continue to see. You, you, you see Mabinti and Samai, they would ask each other, you get small and then you get chile. But when it's time to election, what's the, what, what is happening now? That, Samuel, was the good old days. What we're seeing now is a Sierra Leone that is completely divided in terms of job interviews, in terms of positions, in everything, in terms of who gets victimized, who gets... We're seeing a lot of victimization going on, and it seems to follow some sort of a tribal or regional line. And we cannot consolidate something that we don't have. Right now, the, and I was reading an article that was saying the peace in Sierra Leone is no longer fragile. I beg to disagree. Our peace is as fragile now as it was post-war, post-conflict. And we're seeing areas that the government should really focus on. Um, Samuel, they're paying no heed to. Now, you're having a conversation about peace. You have at least two of us here, or three of us here, are from political um, um, families. And when we had that August 10 thing, we saw the president engage several people. He engaged the paramount chief. He engaged religious leaders. At that point, did he at all engage political parties? So we cannot consolidate something we don't have. Mm -hmm. And until we have leadership that's really invested in having a peaceful Sierra Leone, you, you, you have to lead and we will follow. So when we have that kind of a situation where we have a judiciary that's, I mean, for all I can say, today I was saying to my sister, is that why don't we just have the chiefs, the section chiefs and the town chiefs do the legal stuff? Because they may not adjourn cases. They'll, you'll give them a goat or a chicken for your fine and the case will be solved. Instead, we see cases from December 2021 being adjourned and adjourned and adjourned as if <laughs> We're graduating hundreds of people from the law school. Cannot somebody give a verdict? Uh, you know, so right. those are the things that are weakening the peace, yeah. uh, Samuel. M M M Mikhailo, let, let me hear you on the take of Sierra Leoneans in dealing with corruption and looking at the ripples of corruption in the state. They said it, it's killing um, the development trajectory. Because first off, we do not have a national agenda. We do not have a national plan to help um, cement whatever development we would start for it to continue. Because when party A comes, it's going to be different from when party B is in power. So we start afresh. And that has taken us nowhere. And again, we're seeing wasteful spending, according to one of um, the, the people um, spoken to there, that with Tom, Tom Abum project, for example, we should be harvesting, we should be okay by now in terms of providing rice for this nation. But the ACC is saying, wait, we have to investigate even the resources we've invested in the Tomabu project. So where does that put us? Uh, well, um, to start with Samuel, <coughs> the topic of discussion, consolidating peace, tackling tribal divisions, linking it with the current unfolded circumstances, 
and um, the confessions that have just been made by people I saw in the clip is something very, very much difficult to handle at this moment. Mm. We started off on a very, you know, faulty foundation because uh, the transition that took us to 2007 and that uh, transition that also took us to 2018 cannot be compared to the way things are unfolding now. You know, Sierra Leone fought a decade civil war. You know, we destroyed our own very, you know, infrastructures. The economy was nothing to write home about. But when we transitioned, there was what we refer to as post-war reconstruction, right? We saw the international community paying attention to Sierra Leone. Many other people intervening security sector was reformed. And in this, the security sector in this case uh, is not only limited to the police or the military, but even the judiciary, it was reformed to a very large extent and the reformation is still ongoing. We saw the creation of ONS and the establishment of many state institutions that are considered to be good governance institutions. And my board has started off by saying, citizens' participation is indispensable to good governance. We have stated often and again that the civil space is actually limited, that the national conversation is being stifled, that people are not allowed to express how they think or how they view things and how they want government to actually address some of the concerns that are coming from citizens. We've seen a situation in which people like Madame Femi Claudio School and a host of other politicians have spent night behind bars for merely expressing opinions on national issues. We've seen all of that. So if we are talking about citizens' participation uh, in democracy or good governance being indispensable, we have to look back to where we are coming from. I was expecting much from His Excellency the President, oh, considering oh, oh, so, the so, fact so, that... For, forgive me, yeah. some of these concerns are not starting now. They did not start four years ago. These are monumental crises we've, we've been managing, <laughs> whether it's APC, SLP, or whatever political party in, in power. Yes. So how do, no, they, how I, do we handle them? I am seeing you are also towing the lines of the politicians. When they come, they want to apportion blames to their predecessor. We are not saying it is commencing now. But when you come, you come with a different platform and a new agenda. Mm. You come with a manifesto, promise the people change. So, I, so, so my, my question is not to apportion blame, continue. but how do we yeah. collectively as a nation address these concerns? Like I said, we have to create the civic space, allow the national dialogue to go on, allow people to freely express what they think, Dialogue with the opposition. I, at a point, I saw the Usman Fode Yansane, Dennis Bright, and others. They took a letter to State House just to see the president. They were blocked. In fact, they were embarrassed. You cannot create the platform for a dialogue with you know fellow politicians and other political parties, and you think you're going to get it right. It is wrong. You will not get it right. The human rights of the people have been stifled. The rule of law is not in proper operation. A lot of things are going wrong. So dialogues of such that is being proposed by uh, our border and the organization is representing, they are spot on and timely. The time is now to do those dialogues. Although we have also stated that um, they started off on a very wrong footing. But then let us come to the question you are actually referring to regarding corruption. Mm -hmm. When President Bio came, he promised us a, a new direction and stated a lot of things. He made series of promises. People are talking about unnecessary spending. He said he was going to cut down on the wage bill. You cannot compare now what is on the wage bill to like five years back. He said he was going to close some offices, that some offices were established unnecessarily, some commissions, even some diplomatic missions. When he came, he has established missions and created more offices, you know, contrary to what he promised the people. So that tells you those offices, more often than not, are even just created to satisfy a certain set of individuals that are considered to be loyalists of a certain political party, and it is wrong. We've seen the NGC raising issues regarding tribal auditing with state institutions that are responsible to manage the affairs of the country for it to be actually peaceful. We saw their audits regarding the ECSL. When they started raising the issues that the ECSL employment is not based on region and tribe 
and political, you know, loyalty. A lot of us trivialize that. But you've seen all of that now. So we have to come back to the drawing board and start addressing those things. Mm. Elections are just at the corner. Yeah? We have seen the amount of money that is being spent on foreign travel. Yeah? Now you cannot compare what is being spent in the four and a half years of President Bill to what was spent by Anes Baikoma in 10 years. <laughs> It is almost tripling that amount. And that is also wrong. We are not even considerate of the fact that we must be considering how to spend more on capital investment and recurrent. What we are spending, we are not getting back. Mm. Some unnecessary expenditure must not be tolerated as a government. Right. And that is why government cannot subsidize on many things. Now, I was in a debate. Somebody was lying to me that they are subsidizing for rights and some basic essential commodities. That is also very wrong. And that person um, is the, 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 the regional spokesperson for the SNPP in the North. I was on Hope FM very recently. You must also not be deceiving the people. You cannot be subsidizing for rice, and we are buying rice almost 600,000 lots. All right. So that is the point. Let, let, let me hear from Honorable Ibrahim Tawa on how do we address the issues around corruption as a state. Uh, thank you very much, Samir. I've listened to my brother, Salia. I want to, first of all, thank him for, and his organization for the brilliant idea to talk about national cohesion, to talk about issues surrounding the livelihood of Sierra Leoneans, to talk about hope, to talk about what will happen to the next generation. You've seen, you've heard from your first mm. panel um, introduction and conversation, and you will realize that the problem starts here. We are talking about a national conversation. We are looking at the way forward. We are looking at how to tackle a menace that has started from independence. But people are looking to apportion blame to somebody that is seated in the last four years. People are moving and shifting the goalposts because they think they want to play a political card. And that is not it. You called us here to discuss a national agenda, an agenda that speaks to the daily issues. You see on your television, somebody who is not a politician is telling you that we should have a national agenda that should span for a 10-year period. It's not as if there has not been any agenda. Every political party that has come to governance comes with an agenda. Between 2007 and 2018, or 2017, President Kouma had the agenda for change and the agenda for prosperity, both stemming from the uh, uh, poverty reduction strategy paper Probably the document strategy document that President Kaba was working on. So there's an agenda. But what is lacking, if you go to the agenda for prosperity itself, you will realize that in the preface to setting the pillars in the agenda for prosperity that President Kaba ran on in 2012, they made analysis on the shortcomings, on those things that are really serious stumbling blocks and obstacle to achieving some of the tangibles or some of the indicators they've set in the agenda for change. And one of them is something that your, uh, 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 one of the speakers said, mm. that there is lack of evaluation and monitoring. And it is there mm. that evaluation and monitoring is lacking between and among MDs. That the process for assessing management of resources in the agenda for prosperity, whilst they were prefacing the, the success and failure, the challenges of the agenda for change, they said that this is a serious problem. And this has been a problem from 1961. So what should we do as a nation? We should not come here and begin to talk about, oh, there is no function in judiciary. There has not been a function in judiciary for, in Sierra Leone for 60 years. It is not just yesterday. Everybody knows. But how do we fix that? Now? That is Especially why we are here. With, with that is why we are here. We should not be labeled the, the points to say, oh, we want to score political goals or we want to make a statement that should that will appeal to our base. Like I told my brother the last time when we were on SLBC, my brother Abdul, that we should stop playing the victim's card and talk about the issues. Now, the issue is what you've introduced is corruption. And in every manifesto in this country, Go to the agenda for change, agenda for prosperity, President Kouma's uh, 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 inaugural address at the National Stadium. He said the most difficult and thorny issue to tackle that will transform Sierra Leone and Sierra Leoneans mm. is corruption. President Bio said that he's going to fight three wars. The war against corruption, the war against poverty, and the war against indiscipline. And if you look at them, 
three of them, they are inextricably linked. Because if you fight corruption, you fight indiscipline. Mm. If you fight corruption, you fight poverty. And corruption has been a thorny issue in Sierra Leone. Yes, our numbers are going up in the international measurements. We were at 49. Today we are in the 80s. But are we talking about the 80s and 49s today? No. Do I want to talk about SRPP today? No. I am SRPP. I want to react to what Femi has said. I want to react to what Mikhailo has said. But that is not the reason why I'm here. I'm here for us to look at the national picture. It's not a blame game business. Let's talk about what will take say. How can we tackle corruption? Mm -hmm. how, can we, how can we make impunity a thing of the past? Because we are talking about, oh, uh, people are in power. They are profiled on tribal basis. They are... Like Mikhailo just said, that oh, they want to do audit at ECSL because he realizes that people at ECSL have names that are more familiar with maybe Southeast. But come to think of it, all of us, maybe even Femi, if you go back to her uh, 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 original origin, yeah, you will realize that there must be a link coming from somebody from the north or from the south. So we are inextricably linked. We are connected. Our umbilical mm. cord in this country are connected. So let us speak like the people. Let us talk about how to tackle impunity. Let us talk about how to, en to enhance and bring efficiency and effectiveness in our civil service space. So, 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 so Samia, let me finish. I, 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 okay, let me finish. Quiet. Go to our civil services. Go to Ministry of Lands. Go to other ministries. People will be strolling into work at night. At said, and meanwhile, they are collecting taxpayers' money. That is corruption, by the way. Corruption is not just stealing. Corruption is depriving people from services that you should render. You go to ministry, other ministries, you will make a complaint for investigation. People will spend decades to investigate. And meanwhile, somebody on the other side are fighting. So what should we look at? We should look at why impunity is pervasive. Why do we choose to be selective? So you Why think, as parliament? Let me finish. So Why I, as I was just going to bring you to parliament. Yes, I'm coming to parliament. Mean? Why as parliament, in all of the, docu the documents, look at the, the national, uh, 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 medium term national development plan. It spoke about parliament. It spoke about the fact that parliamentary oversight is low. Go to the, uh, 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 the People's Manifesto, our manifesto speaks about parliament. Go to uh, uh, the manifesto that Dr. Samuel Kamara ran on. It speaks on parliament. So we should look at the institutions. How can, we st how can we strengthen section 119 of the Constitution? How can we make reports? It doesn't matter who is at the audit service. How can we make reports submitted to parliament by the audit service more efficient? How can parliament put it to public test? How can we debate it? Because you go to the Auditor General, I, last, I think two weeks ago, I listened to the current acting Auditor General. What he said are the same issues. The issues on corruption or the issues on audit borders on procurement and other issues. So let us not finger pick. Because if we are going to finger pick here, if we are going to cherry pick what we want to say mm. and we want to give it a political a, a, a embellishment, it will mean nothing for this conversation. Let us face the conversation and see how we can tackle. The APC and the SIPU, by the way, they have to sit and talk. They have to engage. They should find a bottom line. We are in that agenda that a young man is looking for. They can sit and put an agenda together. That everybody will want to fix this country. Yesterday, somebody was walking on a road. Today, that road is abandoned. Other person picks up another road. Yesterday, somebody was working on markets at Koindu, a very functional market that Tijankaba wanted to revamp. He left money for it. But because people, everything you do, either they will say, oh, oh now we start her. <laughs> oh, now this part, I'm beginning. How, and, and this is not a so conversation how do we, about... So how do we then kill that aspect of taking credit for almost everything? So if the APC is in power, it takes credit. If the SLPP is in power, it takes credit for think, for development. Things that, are, that I mean that you are elected to do, people feel and think that they're doing the nation a favor. Like and I think one, 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 one way is, when we come to this conversation, we must cross-examine ourselves and look at our nation's history, and look at what has happened in the past. Today, my brother is saying, oh, everybody's coming from one region. Yes, 10 years ago, there were like half the cabinet coming from one region, but we are not here to discuss that, because it will not help the people. That young man has told us that we should prepare a national agenda, and if we must prepare a national agenda, we should have a national conversation. We should talk about the issues. If it was a, a party B that has 
problem with that issue. We must say it as a way in which it will project a national picture All right. and it will have a national interest. Let, 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 Sally, I, I want to go to specifically what, what, what were the solutions presented by the people on how do we deal with corruption? Let me first of all say that. Um, thank you very much. Um, all of these, uh, uh, my colleagues here have said something. They've all touched on monitoring. Um, this is Femi uh, Turner talked about it. She, called, she talked about uh, who's monitoring who. Our brother here said um, he talked about the ECS auditing. And in fact, and the Honorable Minister talked about uh, member. Honorable Member. Sorry, uh, sorry Honorable Member. <laughs> Go ahead, Parliament. It's okay. I'm so, so sorry. He also talked about how there's a lack of monitoring and evaluation. Mm -hmm. And one person, many people offered many solutions, but one solution that I remember that was very key mm -hmm. was that everybody should publish their taxes every year. We have the technology to do it now in this world. Every year, everybody should publish their taxes. It should be taxed an electronic de database, you know that's one, one facet of tackling that problem. Mm. Thankfully, we have a member of parliament who can propose such a bill. Because undoubtedly, as you've seen, everybody's talked about, yes, the issues that we all know about. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, and maybe I missed it, I haven't heard a solution. And I think that's what we, start, we should right. start talking about. Just as um, uh, my brother here talked about it, we need to start, and that's a concrete solution, one step. It's not going to be, there's not going to be one, one solution, one thing that you can do that's going to solve it all. But there has to be concrete steps to solve it all. And uh, that's what I'd really implore, and I'll continue imploring throughout this program and every, every time I meet my colleagues here, to talk about the solutions. It's very true. All these, all these things that they've, they've talked about, they're issues that are well known, but we have to, that's, that's, indispensable. If mm. we don't talk about solutions, and that's one solution, as I said, yeah. if everybody is taxed, at least that's one measure of being making, account, making everybody accountable. Mm. I mean, we know how it is that we see a lot of developments from personal people, pe people being getting wealth that is unexplained. Right. But where did they get that wealth? Thankfully now, there's an NIN that everybody wants to have. If everything can be tied, everything, every major expenditure, for example, as somebody said in one of, uh, I think it was, I've forgotten which town it was, mm -hmm. but they said if every major expenditure could be tied with a person with a tax number, that's one thing that we'll be able to know, be able to monitor mm. how people are getting money. Mm. So, 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 so it boils down to transparency. There whatever, you go. whatever is being done has to be transparently, um, has to be very transparent in, in the way it is being done. Um, so as we, we, we talk about corruption, let me just quickly go again to, to, to the people. Um, there's also another fundamental problem that they raised, the issue of inclusion. You know, we talk, we, we, we've talked about how institutions are being um, overtaken by certain tribes or regions or people in a certain place. But, but, but what do, um, do the people um, think about inclusion and how we should address um, that problem of inclusion? Plenty of women are waiting in head positions. Then. Mm -hmm. they, know they, they know they practice inclusiveness. Oh. Yes. They always like for be autocratic leaders. Okay. Yes. They're not in democratic. Okay. Anything where they do, they take decision by themselves. Later, they come now saying, so I don't do. And if they do so, they not go fine. Yeah. So now he make some woman, they know they vote for them, come be woman. 50 50. One woman, one woman. Tip assistant. But now in theory, when it comes to practice, they're not a great one. So, when I go work hard, when I visit the political party, then the constitution, let them revisit her, and what is the right inside the constitution? Let them strictly go by what is the right inside the constitution. The woman on leg, we woman in dinner. So, in what you can say, but I've been a woman in a class, I've been with food, I'm not going to feel it. I'm going to pick you up fast. So, before my woman in a class, I'm going to pick you up because they don't say where woman would definitely the law will stand. You don't have to the law will deal with you. Yeah. Okay. So the is that I always know the bed. The reason why I make as you say woman and be paid for votes for incumbent woman in a now fear of change. They don't want change. Because they literally feel say way man they day. Me, I believe say if you put man before some side, corruption very, very easier. But if woman they day, she's very strict and standard. They, 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 they make blind eyes to corruption. Mm -hmm. So the reason why make women they fear for putting and come woman before now because they don't want change. They, they fear change. If man and they, they, they see say they go do small yuki yuki and yeah. change things. Yeah. Yeah.
You remember there, there was a bill in Parliament for 30 percent voter for women. And Parliament they deliberate and they refuse to pass that. Where they from don't be wait if we don't be the basis for empowerment of women. So if we actually want for, if we want for a demonstrate seriousness in addressing women participation in politics or yeah, effective women participation in politics, I think say affirmative laws for me. Once that they know they you know in the actual system the, the failure of parliament for enact that law that don't demonstrate the bottleneck in, in, in the main language the responsibility to women. So for me, I feel say passing the law or passing an affirmative laws for giving the right to women for occupy certain positions, I think more important. I told you the solution would be the media. The media now a platform within between the, the government and the people. And so everybody gets opportunity for talk directly to these politicians within our power. But we need the help of the media. If the um, different um, various media platforms go around communities then, and either in a vox pop or any kind of um, um, show, and talk about the, the dissatisfaction of citizens. And I think this message is then will able to reach the politician and other stakeholders then. That's it. Uh, inclusion. How do we get um, more women into the, into the mix, um, Femi? It, it appears you are your, your own enemies. No, um, we can talk about the focus on the angle of women and being inclusive. Right. Let, let us make it broad about right. citizens inclusion. and political party inclusion. Quiet. That is extremely lacking. As um, Menkalu was saying, for my opinion, which I was proved right in the end, I was arrested. I was arrested on one occasion. On a second occasion, I was arrested. I was never charged. I still have not been charged. And they have my passport, and they have refused to give it to me. Those are human rights violations. So what peace could we consolidate? The women who were arrested, many of the women who were arrested, um, Samuel. Some of them were not even interviewed in court. They were simply sentenced. Five year, two year, three year, five million. Almost as if it was on a factory line. And I listened to Honorable Tower and I, I really sympathize with him having to defend the indefensible. Because if you have even a family, I am the mother in the family, how my children are trained will reflect on me. They are badly behaved in public. It will not even, it will definitely reflect on me and to a greater extent on my, my partner. So you cannot be the government sitting in power and you are scrambling for solutions when the solutions mean exactly what the people are saying, collaboration, engagement. Samia, let us look at the elephant in the room, which is PR. Mm. Even this program they are on now to those who were given rejection slips. People have no clue that it is happening. There's been no sensitization. Therefore, there has been no inclusion. Even today, when my people went to check on centers, there were nobody there. They didn't, nobody knew. Did they go around with megaphones telling people, una get rejection slip, una come, et cetera, et cetera? Nobody knows. And those who went, adults, we are told, go and get a birth certificate. And what was on their rejection slips? It was written there, you cannot prove that you are a Sierra Leonean. How can we consolidate the peace? I, I, I want to ask a, a question. Um, if you opposition politicians, for example, are today called to serve in government, would you serve? If you are appointed ministers, for example, would if, you serve? Are you calling me to serve in which government? In this SLPP-led government? Yes. I would absolutely not accept. I will not accept. Why? It's seven months to the election. No, not just necessarily now. I, I, I mean, I'm just looking at, we're talking about inclusion. No. And, it, it, you it, know, it, I think it's about three three years ago, I asked the same question to Honorable Kande Kole Yumkela, and um, in, in, in an exclusive interview I had with him, um, he, he, appear, he, he appeared then to to have given all the bright solutions to dealing with the economy. But then I asked him, what if Mr. I mean, if Mr. President listens to this interview now, and Mr. President decides to say, Dr. Kande Kole Yumkela, would you please come and serve as the Minister of Finance? I mean, his response was, let me go and talk to my people. No, if we're talking about the early days, yes, when um, President Bill just took power, and he um, offered those positions, different, supervisory, whatever. Mm. And he called a meeting. Remember that we did have a meeting with him. 
political parties did have a meeting with him. And I was, what we were saying was, we're not a country you for money. Let us have, even if it's once every two months, where we have a round table, mm. where we can talk about issues, and you can, look, when you are in that position, you are in a cocoon. You are enclosed. You are told what you want, they want you to hear. You know what you want to hear. And it's controlled. But if you have something every two months, where you have a round table, and you listen to dissenting voices, you're the capusens. Mm. Because they say one man says no to sense. And, you know, it takes, it takes a whole... Uh, 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 um, you know, the whole political structure to put things together. In those early days, in an area where I felt I would be meaningful, I would have accepted. Mm. I would have, to make a difference. Well, let me assure you, um, Samuel, being the type of person I am, I would have been fired probably <laughs> faster than the speed of light. <laughs> because I would not be a yes minister. I would say, Mr. President, on this issue, I think you're wrong. I think this is the better way to do it. And as Tawai is saying that we shouldn't blame, but he's the headmaster. He's the principal. He's the president. And when you campaign for a job, when you interview for a job, when you write your CV, you make sure you're equipped. You look at the job. What are the, 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 the job requirements? Am I going to be able to do it? Well, you're not going to say you're able to do it, and then you say, well, APC be left, and so, uh, and this other party be left, and so. No, the box stops with you. And there are areas of, of building the peace that this government had the opportunity to do. What areas? Let us look at the police. What we're seeing with policing now doesn't, the other day I was asking them, I said, is this community policing? You grab people, you arrest them, you beat them up, you split up their heads, they whap the woman there with Koboko. And, and, and this is community policing. And you, you go to court and you're filing papers, the IG versus these women, without interviewing anybody. We see the police stop the motorbike, pulling key. Policeman jump on top of the motorbike. If they drive and go, keke, same thing. You see policeman, they pull the number plate, come up and put a put a, a whole arm, can go to the station. Can that not be fixed? Is that unfixable? We look at a judiciary, those women who do, came... Do, does, that, the, does that tell about the breakdown in society in general? It tells that it's a breakdown in leadership. Why should mm. we be afraid to call it by its proper name? When you can easily pick up the phone and say, look, Mr. IG, blah, 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 I don't want to see this. The, the level of... I mean, and you wonder why are the police doing it? Mm. Lose your phone, Samuel. And then they find your phone. You go there. You fill out the forms. A friend, uh, uh, one of my staff, lost her iPhone. He filled the form. He go there. Then find the phone. They demanded a million. Eventually, they negotiate for two hundred. Even when they say bail is free, I always tease uh, and the, the SEC commissioner. I said, where is bail free? Bail is only free if you you probably have a big personality and a big name and they're afraid for ask you for bail. So. Can the judiciary not be better organized? Is it? Well, if you give people jobs by who are your friends and people you know, you're stuck. And he, we're talking about corruption, and we had a perfectly competent auditor general. And when her attention swung to the state house and fake receipts, she was suspended. And if she was suspended, I mean, if we're talking about justice, you handle the case, you investigate it promptly, you come to a conclusion, you put the woman back there doing work. Instead, you leave a vacuum. Why? That's what that man is saying on the TV, that you're spending money like crazy. And when we talk about the president's travel, they get upset. When we talk about the length of the convoy of V8 massive black jeeps, 30, 40 in a convoy, when there are people who do not have what they're eating for the day, who has the responsibility? Do we, do we have do we have the leadership, Femi, at this point to fix these things? The commitment. In the, in the, in the, in the, I mean, in the in the period in which we're talking about. In four years, you. I mean, we're seeing people transforming other countries in our neighborhood, not far, and it takes the discipline and the love of the leader for the people. You cannot be monofocused. Look 
at the, 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 the registration process, uh, um, Samuel, people were disenfranchised. I called it voter, voter registration suppression. Mm. And I saw, even now, so tomorrow, they should have told everybody, if you have a rejection slip, you should go. But which center, where do you go? Where has it been posted? Mm. There are only few centers where you can take your rejection slip. Has it been publicized? So tomorrow, I'm going to be in centers, watching to see. So don't be surprised if you see me <laughs> arrested again, because I'm advocating for the people. Let, let me draw you um, again, just quickly, before I, I bring in Minkailu. On the issue of inclusion, we've seen Parliament has passed the um, Gender in, um, in, um, Equality and Empowerment um, Bill. Now, that's given, that's an assurance that the 30 percent quota women have been calling for is going to be that. Of, um, is it in 2021, of the, um, December, when the president launched the first gender uh, empowerment policy? Um, we've seen the, the, the first lady making a push for the adoption of um, the, um, the healing and prevention of sexual exploitation, child ex sexual exploitation, and all of this. Are these good signs? Are these ways of actually creating an environment for women to be safe and included in policy making and decision making? I think it's a good sign, it's a good start. But then somebody asked me one time, and they said, uh, <laughs> is Sorelu ready for women in power, in positions of power? I said, what other women see and what young girls see happening to the likes of myself? Does it give you the desire to go into politics? Does it give you the desire to want to serve? It makes you scared. And when we now, because we are now planning on moving with our party and we're going into the districts and we're talking to women, mm. women are hesitant to engage in politics. Women are scared of seeing what's happening when women legitimately protest and they are beaten to an inch of their lives. Some died post. They're scared. So you cannot be singing hallelujah on the one hand and saying crucify him or crucify her on the other. Where we see a very competent male being vilified <laughs> because she was standing up for her, for her counselor, mm. being in court, being dragged to court for a case that seems to have no ending. Mm. So where are you encouraging women? It's by example. And not just by having women being deputies, but giving women positions where you, you, you're really showcasing the women. And don't ask, where are the women? The women are there. Mm. The women really are there. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, let, let, let me bring in Minkaila. So uh, um, the issue of inclusion, as Femi is talking about, um, for example, women are there. You know, I, 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 I would go back to in 2018 when um, <laughs> President Bill was elected. There were women offered ministerial positions. They turned it down about five of them that I'm aware of. And at some point, uh, we had to ask questions why. So it goes back to, if you do not belong to my political party, why would I want to work with your party, with your government? So in the issue of inclusion, I mean, the, 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 the women that, um, that were, were, were um, engaged, they expressed that I think the biggest enemy to women's empowerment, to women's involvement, are the women themselves. So how do we fix inclusion? We know it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crisis in Sierra Leone inclusion, depending on who is in power and on what, um, what time frame and all of that. So how do we fix it? Yeah, it can be fixed, but um, I have a lot of issues to run to. But let me answer the question you posed directly. You see, when they rejected, you've just revealed that you are aware of five of the women that rejected appointment. The SLPP government started off on a very wrong footing. And so most of those women are very intelligent people. They were of the firmest of conviction that the SLPP was heading for failure. So they may not want to be they caught up to. within that particular web. As a result, they had to opt out of that. But when it comes to inclusion, the political party that I am representing, mm -hmm. you know, it is in our constitution now, yeah, that 30% elective positions in our political party must be you know, given to women. It is law now. We have also made it abundantly clear that if we are fortunate to command majority and be elected government, next government, 30% of the appointment will be women. And when President Koma was actually president, 
We saw the empowerment of women up uh, to the point of having a chief justice as a woman. You know, and a lot of other parastators were headed by women. So we, as a political party, women's empowerment is at the core of whatever we think about. But then when my brother was making his point, he said, we are looking at the way forward. Somebody is here apportioning blame. I want to make it abundantly clear to the Honorable Member of Parliament that um, he will not shape this conversation for us to his liking. We are here to have a conversation and we have to be very blunt in calling things by their names. We are going to continue to apportion blame. In fact, that is my responsibility as an opposition, yeah, to expose the inadequacies of government and provide solution to some of those inadequacies if government can listen. Mm. Time and again, we have provided solution. In some cases, government may not even count in as the solutions that we provide as opposition parties. He was making reference to, I mean, the PRSP 1 and 2, and that when President Koma came, he continued with the agenda for change, which is the PRSP 3, and agenda for prosperity, which is the PRSP 4. That is what a government should be. A government is continuity. There is a state, Republic of Sierra Leone, and government is constant. Political parties may come and go, but government is constant, yeah? That is why the head of any ministry, the administrative head, is the permanent secretary. We have directors and other heads of department. Even if APC comes and go, SLP comes and go, the ministry is there. The department and agencies are there. They are to work in the interest of the state, not in the interest of political party. So President Kroma was aware of this very fact. That is why when he came, he continued the trajectory that was already established by President Kaba. Instead of bringing things that are not necessary, he continued. That is why, in fact, when we saw President Kaba, he did a lot for country. Yeah. When we were transitioning from the period of war to proper democracy, the building of state institutions, like the Office of the Ombudsman, the ONS, he implemented a lot of the recommendations of the TRC. When President Kroma came, he followed on that same footing. But when President Bio took over after President Kroma, he promised us to wage a war against corruption, poverty, and indiscipline. But I want to tell you, how can you claim you are going to wage a war against corruption? Charities, they say, begins at home, and the office of the president is the most corrupt institution, perhaps one of the most corrupt institutions, as um, once established by Transparency International. My brother, Tawa Sitinia, is a victim of circumstance. He suffered in parliament himself and honorable Bougival for merely exposing corruption. He was robot, some of his privileges. He was even committee chairman for one of the committees. He was removed as committee chairman. Oh, resigned. Well, you resign or remove, maybe you are compelled to resign. Yeah, for merely exposing corruption. You see, it's one person that uh, the country have been looking up to. Yes. In fact, at some point, he won the whole award, best parliamentarian of the year, you know, for being steadfast, for being upright, and for advocating for the maximization of the welfare of the people and the fight against corruption. But lately, I am seeing my brother towing the traditional line of politicians. And I think <laughs> you must have to have a rethink. Yeah, President Bio promised us the fight against corruption. They are telling us about double dipping, the forging of, of receipts in the office of the president. We've seen circumstances in which the audit reports cannot be even be counting us. Well, that the is it. That is scope investigates. No, those investigations. But the, Lord, the Lord prohibits the president himself from be, being investigated at this point. I understand. So, well, I, I, I mean, I yeah. have, have efforts, nah, have nah, efforts nah, been nah. made? I, I, I understand. There is what is known as diplomatic immunity. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The president is immune to a very large extent. But the fact is, there is double dipping in the office of the president and it was exposed received forgery, was exposed. And I also want to make abundantly clear that the audits, the, the reports coming from the Auditor General's office, they have not been treated seriously in Parliament, even though mm -hmm. the law provides for that. If President Bill wants to fight corruption, let him go to those audit reports. There are many institutions, you know, people that he employed, that have been named to be corrupt according to that report, but none of them, you know, have been brought to the law to answer to some uh, corruption charges. Then you are claiming to be fighting corruption. Can the executive act on about... the audit report when fa Parliament fails? When Parliament fails? Work? Yes. Now there is the anti Parliament has not been debated. Now, now, Parliament is one arm of government, yeah? But um, we also, we are aware of the fact that it is by law established for Parliament to debate the audit report, mm -hmm. for them to make recommendations, for them to even form committees to look into some of the allegations. Right. But Parliament have not been up to the tax. 
And we know the parliament is almost rubber stamp. They only do what the executive tells them to do. to do. Or what is expected to be done. That is why when they came, they imposed a speaker on parliament. They removed 10 parliamentarians so that no party can have majority in parliament, yeah, to challenge their excesses. They did all of that. But come to think about another issue that President Bill said he was going to wage war on, poverty. Somebody was making an analogy, yeah, an analogy of the, 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 the children and the sweet. When you have, yes, in Creole, if you get two picking them, you give the one sweet, you give the other one, they keep the one, later you go give. No, that is telling us about the even distribution of resources. And President Bill must be aware that he was not elected for the Southeast only. He was elected to govern Sahara. Is, is that how distribution, is that how the country's um, resources no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. are distributed I'm now? I'm making a point, yes. I have Go to ahead. say that. When they came, they met the construction of certain roads in the north, like the road leading from Makini to Kamakwe, for example. That construction was ongoing. Machines were taken from that place to somewhere in the south. They never continued, and government is continuity. They, they actually also, what they did with London, is it um, London Mining or one of the, the, the mining companies, yeah? Um, they, they even had a problem up or, or until going to the international court because it terminated the contract that was not signed by them. Let us, you know, know that government is continuity. When you meet your predecessor, have undertaken a lot of things, you have to continue from that trajectory because government is continuity. Now, I also indicated the point here that I think must be touched on. Yeah, the even distribution of resources, we are still talking about that. Now, take a look at what is actually currently unfolding in some part of the South and the East. The construction that is taking place in Bo and Kenima, for example, road construction. We have other strategic roads that we are on the pipeline to be constructed. I am fortunate to be coming from two districts. Yeah? I am coming from both Tonkolili and Kenema. There was a time the SNPP went and destroyed plantations from my 91 to Maboka. There is a strategic road from my 91 to Maboka that will even take you to Kono. They destroyed all of the plantations when they came in 2018, 2019, with the promise that they are going to construct that road. But because it is not their stronghold, they have abandoned that. And they are very busy now constructing roads in the southeast. That is not evenly distribution of resources. And that is just the analogy that that person was making there. We must be mindful of those facts. When we say we are not to apportion blame, we cannot sit here to only make false allegations against the president or this government. We are saying things that are facts. Mm. We are saying things that are unfolding on a daily basis. All right. And we are seeing all of that. Now, talking about the, the judiciary Madam Femi was referring to, we are, fastly, we are fast approaching elections. Mm? But then most of those that are aspiring for the flag of the APC are currently in court. There are many cases piled in the appeals courts. Dr. Samura Kamara, the Richard Conte, and many of them, they are in the appeals court. There are cases in the high court. What is delaying the process? Why can't they speedily <laughs> conclude those cases if we want to see exactly. peace? We cannot sit here and talk about peace. When they go to parliament, they try to surreptitiously, you know, introduce a, a table, a, 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 a legal instrument without going through the, true process, the, the right process. It was not even uh, uh, gazetted. They went to parliament, bulldozed their way, and now they have also issued a report and have sanctioned members of parliament who are members of the APC. Right. Now, you know, due process was not even done. Mm. What, what is happening to the principle of natural justice? If the clerk of parliament authored the report for the attention of the speaker, there is what is called a privilege committee. That report was to be tabled to the privilege committee for their investigations and recommendation. Yeah. But without investigation, sanction has already been done. Okay. That is also wrong. You cannot talk about consolidating peace when all of those are unfolding. Now, let me also remind you that there is an originating notice of motion filed by APC lawyers that is being headed by Dr. Abla Okonte, one of the drafters of the Constitution. We have made it abundantly clear that the PR electoral system that they want to introduce is illegal. They must not go ahead with it. They still want to impose it and shove it down the throat of the people of this country. The, the, you have also seen another letter mm -hmm. requesting for, for the auditing of the voter register by the leader of the opposition in parliament. Government you know, is not addressing all of those things. We are here talking about consolidating peace. Peace, peace cannot be consolidated when the SNPP want to rig the election and by any means so, so, necessary. So on a normal day, when you talk about government, we refer to the executive. But yeah. for example, is the judicial not independent of the executive? 
is now, um, we're also it, looking it, it at the up, Nepto and is, Commission. Now, the judiciary is up to be independent, but it is not independent. Okay. Let us make it very clear, mm. yeah? I am not saying it is only commencing now, but it promises us a new direction and a change. Okay. Yeah? Now, you cannot make the judiciary very independent when judges are even appointed by the president. Let me at his beck and call. Let, let, let's hear from Honorable on the issue of inclusion. How do we address that? Uh, thank you very much, Senator. Let me start by maybe correcting some of the, the misstatements, misposition, and maybe exuberance from well, collectively, COP and APC are one. So there are two people speaking up against the government here. But let me start by saying, mm. Madam Femi spoke about police brutality. I was an elected member of parliament when the LUC in Lomli, Shilon then, coordinated police officers attacked me at Kaningo. I went to the police for refuge. It was the LUC himself when people were brought from Kanike to assassinate me, it was the LEC himself that showed them the exit and entry of the police station. I have the photo. I was given a police fatigue at 1 p.m., 1 a.m. in the morning to escape with me out of that police station. So for me, what we should do, like I said in the beginning, the guy who was saying, I want to shape the discussion. No, I want us to be honest to Sierra Leoneans. Because from all he has said, he spoke about all these, all these reports not being debated. You want to talk about debating of all these reports? The APC had 72 members of parliament between 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me finish. When you are talking, I just speak. Quiet. Please. The APC had 72 members of parliament between 2012 and 2017 or 2018. That is too short of two thirds. The majority should do anything. Never in their lifetime, including the honorable leader of the opposition, who was the deputy speaker and the chairman for the public accounts committee, never in that period that any member from the APC, including himself, has said, let us debate the audit report. So you see the level of tolerance that a member of parliament in the ruling government asked for the audit report to be debated. I publicized it. I came to this very television like 10 times over. I went to all other radio stations to emphasize the point that, yes, this is a constitutional requirement. Let us do it. It was not done yesterday. Does it make it right today? Yeah? But the point is, if we want to use that now as a political bargaining, oh, and they are not debating the audit report, what point will he score? The Honorable Chairman of Madame Majuba, he was the one he made to Dr. Samuel Kamara, and he was running on transparency and accountability. Then he was the Chairman of Public Accounts Committee. He did not have the guts. So say, let us debate all the general reports. There were piles of the general reports for 2015, 16, and 17 that were not table in parliament while it was a deputy speaker. It was under Sergei Paul that they were table. And when they were table, I asked for a debate. I left the committee, by the way. Let me correct the record. I left the committee because what I expected to be done as per my function under Section 93, performing oversight, if I don't have it, I will go. Madam Femi said, oh, it's seven months to election. It was in the middle of the journey when God asked Joshua to help Moses. He did not refuse. If you believe in the cause, you fight for the cause. In the mountain of Massa and Megiba, the people tried and tested Moses' patience. But when he came, in his anger, he went back to God that, oh, I'm tired of this. God said, stand firm, for you shall receive the salvation of the Lord. If you don't believe in inclusion, you so in this SFB government, there's this, there's that. It is on record President Bill has given more women position than any other president in this country. I didn't want to go political because I'm not here to discuss politics today. I'm here to discuss national inclusion and national cohesion. Femi spoke of um, the issue of government having the solution. No government in the world, not even the United States, not even President Biden has the solution, all the solutions to the problems of America. You watch the news every day, there are issues in America. You talk about police brutality, and you want to open the presidency and the government, go to America, every day they are killing people in either Minnesota, or in Georgia, or in even New York, policemen. They are also part of the executive, but they also have a, a, a command structure. So when it comes to that, let us fix the issue of the command structure. My brother spoke of appointment of judges. That is not in Israel. That is a constitutional issue everywhere in the world. Judges are appointed by the president. 
So it is up to them. It is an individual issue to go sit, talk about integrity. Like two months or so ago, I listened to the Chief Justice. And he was cataloging issues after issues why cases are delayed. That either lawyers from either side, whether plaintiff or defendant or whatever they call it, would have to file in affidavits, file in motions. They would not file the motions in time. They would ask for extension. And if they ask for extension, it is not the responsibility of the court to go to the client or to go to the, the, the complainant or whosoever and say, oh, your lawyer has filed in the motion. You are paying him. It should, it should be transparent with you. So if cases are piling up, it is not the But we've seen in this country where an elected vice president was removed. But the same judiciary that everybody was saying, oh, it has gone bad yesterday, five years ago, two years ago, it was that same judiciary, Supreme Court matter, that said, yes, President Koma had the right to remove his vice president. So this judiciary we are talking about, like I said in the beginning, we are addressing perennial issues. Let me finish, Samir. Yes, I, I, he also I, spoke about I, I, as, coming as, to as you come in, allow me to ask this question. But, I mean, with all of these things, we're still putting colors to the issues that Sierra Leoneans mm -hmm. are talking against. They don't want the politics. They don't want the, I mean, the colors to be red or green. They are seeing a national, they are seeing a national concern. And that concern must be addressed from a national level. I know you, the politicians, you can always color these things. And it, it's difficult for us and the Sierra Leoneans. But then how do we push the, problem, the, the solutions to the crisis? It's when I started, and I will still keep on that path, mm -hmm. the only thing I will continue to do right. is to correct some of the things that they are saying. I will not be analyzing everything they say because it is conscience. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you have two things in this world. You have God and your conscience. It is conscience. I had my brother say, oh, I have been told in the political line. If it is good, I will say it's good. If it's not good, I will say it's not good. Mm -hmm. It is not yesterday. It is not today. I'm sitting here now. I have talked about parliament again, right? Mm. I have talked about the role that every government, every document in this country has spoken about or has talked about or has drafted or analyzed about how parliament can enhance efficiency, how parliament can improve governance. It is not because I am afraid because maybe PI will come, they will not. No, I have a conscience to serve. I was born first in Sierra Leone before being SMPP. Everybody must know that. So when we come to this table, like he said, I will not shape the conversation. I'm not here to shape the conversation. But we must try as much as possible to look at things from a national lens, from the bigger picture. He spoke about Makini Kamakwe. The government owes CSC huge fortunes of money. And if you are to pay them, you are going to prioritize. And if you are to prioritize, you will finish what maybe I've started some 20 years ago. You would have to finish Lomli Toke. That started in Tijankaba's reign. You would have to finish Il Bypass because we've taken three loans under the APC for Il Bypass. But it's not yet finished. So you have to finish that. There is no time in the presidency that the North has had less development under President Bill. There's a school built by Mark Huey at Puloko. We have a lot of other programs, a whole lot of other things in the North. But let me tell you something. If we come here and begin to say, oh, the resources are not evenly distributed, the resources are not evenly shared, the resource envelope in the first place is small. We have to face that. The resource envelope is small. And it's also part of the challenges that the agenda for prosperity analyzed before they propose the pillars. That resource envelopes from donor partners are unpredictable. They will promise you X, they will give tons of conditions, and they will not deliver. So let us don't say, oh, go to your started, they were not finished because of this, this, and that. You know, a whole lot of things. And you talk about CV, there is no job you go for, even with your CV as qualified as you are, that you will settle in that job and do it perfectly. When I applied at Ecobank, I was given a portfolio that was making loss. It was continual losses, regional corporate. So nobody expected me to take the portfolio in one year and begin to make profit. Well, you did. But I did what I could. I did what I could. President Bio, within the limited time, within the challenging environment, don't forget that President Bio took up power in, on the 4th of April 2018. And by 2019, the entire world is battling with a pandemic. And we are still battling with a pandemic. Countries that were at the middle of economic boom, that were at the middle of directing the economies of other countries in the world. China, they had to be forced. There are people who had to force them with demonstration. 
they had to force them to begin to open up, to relax some of their COVID policies. So these are all issues that are also showing that the world is a global village. And if it's a global village, we have to accept it as such, and we have to look at the progress we have made. We've made progress in education. We've made, we're making progress gradually as a country. We're making progress in a lot of issues. We have a number of courts established for specific purposes, for rape, for, for economic crimes, as the case may be. So we are making progress. And as a nation, if we are to make progress for more these people want, we've passed the 30% allotment, 30% gender equality and women's empowerment bill. Yeah? It is a gradual process. It was not there. It was promised several by several governments. It was not there, but it is here now. So it is going to take time. My brother Salia was asking whether I was willing to give up my seat. If my seat is affected by the two man, one woman, I have to accept it. That is democracy. That is what it is. Now, you, you come to talk about PR. You see, we should not say when well, the fox does not have the grape, the grape is a. As part of the, 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 the uh, 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 what is his name? Kawan. Uh, 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 Justice Cowan. Uh, 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 Justice Cowan's, uh, 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 blessed memory, part of his constitutional review that was done under the APC and part of the recommendations accepted, not published by the APC. PR was in there. They accepted PR, and you, they accepted PR on what understanding? On the understanding that it will bring national cohesion, on the understanding that it will help to bring in political inclusion as well, because there is no way you will stop the APC from having a seat in Kailau. There is no way you stop the SFP from having a seat in Cambia. So it means whether it's Kamara, whether it's Bangura, whether it's Vandi standing for APC in the south, in Bo, and has a seat, you have to collaborate, you have to work together. It is inclusiveness. So for them, as opposition eh, 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 people, to come on national television and say, oh, it is seven months, that is part of the, 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 the issues you want to tackle. Excuses. You give your best when you're called upon. You look at football, players are on the bench. One minute to the end of the match, you'll bring them on. Go to 1999, Ole Gunnar was on the Manchester United bench. Three minutes to the end of the match, he was brought on. He accepted, and when he came on, he made the changes. He scored, and he created a goal. So it means time should not be a limitation to your performance. So if it is time that is famous limitation, that oh, it is only seven months, Whenever you're called upon, you should serve. It is service. All right. Let, let, Salia, let me hear what, what specifically were are, we are the solutions. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Um, first of all, the women were most, uh, most of the people, when they talked about in inclusivity, yes, mm -hmm. they, they did touch on political in inclusivity, but they were more or less talking about gender inclusivity. Right. Unfortunately, I think that we've kind of veered away from that. And they were not only talking about, you know, political inclusivity, but also in the corporate world. You know, how many international NGOs are headed by women? Mm -hmm. How many uh, businesses are headed by women? Even though you can have, uh, I think it's a 6% tax break mm -hmm. if a woman is a manager of uh, heading an institution, but how, many, how much of that is actually being implemented? And across um, the board, from all the participants, we talked about this as well, howness and implementation. There are so many policies, but how are they implemented? How are they implemented? How, how are we doing it? If there's a lack of it. There's a national youth policy mm -hmm. that really engages in inclusivity and stuff like that, empowerment. You know, and a lot of things is that, what they notice is that uh, a lot of, um, what we'd call, a lot of dissemination, a lot of publicity mm -hmm. needs to be made in terms of educating people on equity. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think it's about equality, where it's about equ equity. Mm -hmm. Equity recognizes that each person has a particular way that they've come about, the circumstance in which they've, they've, they've come and landed in a particular position. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's uneven for women here in Sierra Leone, let's be frank about it. And they were talking about things like, I, I remember one woman that said that they should do away with women's wings of political parties. Mm. I mean, that was brilliant because I think that that's one, that's a particular notion that plays to the stereotype of what a woman is for. Mm -hmm. a, a woman's wing I know you're, okay, you're laughing, but what it is is that women are capable of being in a position of leadership everywhere. 
if you're going to present a case for a woman to be included, you're going to have to make sure it is a place of responsibility, of equal responsibility, because a woman can do what a man can do. Mm. And I think those are... And most the political parties have not created that, uh, especially the two giant Well, political if they have women's wings, they're, they're working they against that. Wings, you need right? to have, if, you're going to, if you're going to say, like, okay, um, I know Mrs. Uh, Femi has said, um, she talked about, you don't want them as deputies, but we're saying, um, we, we thank, I thank what, uh, what Mr. Kuruma said, where his party is actually reserving 30% of the votes, uh, of the positions, of elected positions for women. That is the kind of step we we're looking for. That is the kind of step that a lot of the people are talking about. But they went further. For example, let's say there's a race for some leadership, like a, a chairman of a particular district. Like chairperson, right. chairperson. If it falls to a man, mm -hmm. then there should immediately be an, uh, an election for a woman underneath. So that means that it is a p position of real authority. Mm. It is not a token of, of, of their ability. Right. And I think um, that's what was really said by a lot of the participants. Mm. Interesting. Let, 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 let's talk about, uh, earlier, um, Minkailu mentioned that um, one of the wars um, waged by President Bill when he took up office is um, lawlessness. And I think one of the areas um, looked into is law and order. So let's get to listen to the people. What do they make of law and order in the country and what can be done? Now, now two of the issues that they have, what we say important. One, strengthening the institutions where they for address with law and order, then also for provide job opportunities for the youth the way, you know, say they always engage the youth into productive and um, productively productivity so that they will, that, 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 that lawlessness will come on and the like. So now the few things that's what we say important for me. I believe say Sierra Leone we get one of the best laws then now for implementing and making very difficult we now get implementing strategies. So I want to talk to the big one when they day out there we the Sierra the Parliament and all. Not only for implement, not only for bring out those laws for we suppose for the implementer and one. Then um, I believe say the youth them for realize say after elections it's going to be only me. Confounding violence, law and order, fine. But really, we need massive sensitization. Sending these messages, radio discussions, these rallies, jingles in different, different languages, they say violence not fine. No only violence, it is where we come to go beyond. You know, they call for development. We preach peace messages also in our different, different languages. Okay. Let all languages say this is not important for election, and I they make the country go before, and this night they bring development inside the country. Well, the other thing they get for you in terms of these drugs, for men it will be minimized. Now for we use the health people in Fogona you. The sensitization a day, but a very slow. Because like me they work at the hospital. When people they get all involved into their acting, the hospital they will carry it. So to me, it, it, it sent a signal to me say the health people know better. Because like even when they can do into their accent, they get the way how they behave, they get a drug so they can give them like some can calm down. So why we know they use them for going at their radio them, going at their bar them, going at side, side people they meet and communicates the the effects, how it will disturb them. All right, um, law, um, law and order. Um, Sally, I put this into context for us. Um, evidently, for many, um, there's a breakdown of law and order. There are beautiful laws, there are policies. Do we implement them as they are? Are we selective in the implementation of those laws? So what, what are the people really saying? Well, I think they've said all that you've just said, and they've, they've talked, lamented about, again, implementation of laws. It seems that uh, their perception is that law and order is for certain people, and a lot of people are also exempt. Mm -hmm. You have situations, for example, I remember a man mentioned that, you know, some youths will misbehave, they will do things to damage private, pri private and public property, they will be in um, police stations, and you have certain politicians that will go and argue for those same people. Mm -hmm. And how do you, you know, you, you, how do you do that? You had certain people that also talked about the sensitization about what it is to uh, that who 
who's responsible for law and order, that we understand that it's, it's a community thing. And they also talked about solutions where another basic tenant of why we have uh, an issue of law and order is because mm -hmm. of idleness. Youths are not employed, exactly. they're not skilled. I remember a man in Kenema that said that we need to have TVET institutions in every single district and chief them so that the youths can now learn skills so that they don't come rushing to Freetown to become idle and become you know, potential time bombs. Mm. So those were certain solutions that were there. But again, they all talked about implementation. One man told me, I don't know, he said some certain le le uh, places of, of learning, TVET institute, I don't know if it was a TVET institution or something, he lamented how the place is empty. The people, you know, there's funding for them to go and learn skills, but for some reason there's not that push. They're not going. The, um, because is it they, they, they are not aware? Is it because of well, uh, where are no they? Do, do, do we have them in every chiefdom? No. Do we? I mean, there, there, there are more than 149 chiefdoms in Sierra Leone. Are they all centered in certain places? We need to have. We need to bring. We need to bring this this, um, this democratization of uh, opportunities and skills and talents out there. You know, um, they talked about, uh, and also, they talked about how, to, for example, to some, they feel that also, when they are in places of influence, now I'm not really talking about being in power per se. For example, if yeah. you're a big man in such a constituency, uh, in a certain You're region, financially stable and No, 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 just that you're, well. you are connected to power in that mm -hmm, place. Maybe mm -hmm. you know the mayor, you know the yeah. people. You can get away with anything. You, the, the law is not for you. Mm. It is something that you can choose to do. Whereas when you come here to certain places, and they think that, so it, it varies, obviously, from constituency to constituency. So this is a societal place. problem? Yes, definitely. And mm. they think that what it is is they, they've talked about, you know, there, were, there was one man, one lady that was talking about exceptions. Exceptions seem to be the norm. Mm. And law and order is not implemented every time, everywhere, and systematically. And so those are the kind of issues that they talked about. So okay. again, and they felt that, you know, but also many people did talk about the idleness of the youth and the unemployed nature of a lot of the new. Mm. So there needs to be an issue of whether it's job creation, but also for a lot of us, um, somebody talked about it and it was more like, okay, there are many people that are going to chase jobs. The majority of people are going to be chasing jobs. But also teach us how to... Do how to also create, create. our own businesses, mm. our own, not only um, not only for example buying and selling, but how to do things to make things, repair things, mm -hmm. produce goods and services, so that they may also employ people. All right. And that is what was also lacking. Okay. All right, Mikhail, let me hear you on the issue of um, law and order, lawlessness. Um, if, I mean, from even the the, the the smallest society, the smallest community, there is a breakdown of law and order. It is unfortunate that um, we are still getting it wrong. Somebody, I was watching the clip. A lady was actually indicating that we have beautiful laws. We have many laws in this country, but um, she said their implementation is the problem. But I want to say enforcement of the law. More often than not, you know, you have people that are highly placed in position. They interfere with the implementation of the law. The law. Sometimes it is only being enforced when uh, you are not, you know, fortunate to be in the good books of a certain establishment. We have seen a circumstance in which people will violate the law, break the law, and go without being punished. Mm. We've seen that in many instances in this country. But when you are not in the good books of the establishment, when you do not have any influence in a certain government, the law is for you. And that is what is bad. The law must be fair. It is one of the fundamental principles of the rule of law. Law must be fair. The law must be implemented to affect everybody equally. Equality before the law. Mm. But that is not the case. And that is what government, present, and future must be thinking about. Let the law be implemented to the fullest. And there must not be delay when it comes to the implementation of the law. Mm. You cannot take someone to court for just you know, a certain trial that will last for three months, and you want it to last for five years. That is also very wrong. All those things must be looked into if we want peace. Because you cannot consolidate peace when the rule of law is not fully being implemented. Mm. When the law is there to only, you know, favor a few individuals, that is also very wrong. So government must look into that, yeah? Let the law be implemented to the satisfaction of all and some. <laughs> but I have a few issues that were, were raised by the quickly, honorable, you have, yeah? Quickly, you have to do that. The APC had 72 members of parliament. 
but the audit report was not debated. You know, sorry to say, but this is not expected. You promise us a new direction, a change. Exactly. You cannot be making comparison. And you, 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 you also said we must not be apportioning blame, but he is also apportioning blame to the past government. The SLPP promised us a new direction. They called their manifesto, the people. We're still manifesto. coloring the conversation. No, but that, let us know. We must not be making reference to the past government. You are elected to deliver on your manifesto promise. Mm. Deliver so that you can be considered for re-election. But they have failed. They have not delivered. No government in the world can address all of the problems. We are not saying government should address all of the problems. That is why when you come to power, you come on a manifesto promise. You have voted in power on that particular platform. Come and implement your manifesto. But you have not even gotten it right. Say 5%, you are now telling, telling the people all over the place that you've scored 90%, you are rating yourself. Allow the electorate to rate you. You must not be rating yourself. Let us note that. Yeah, um, talk about the appointment. He said I talked about the appointment of judges. So you are asking about the independence of the judiciary. I did say the judiciary cannot be independent. Because it is not, it, it is up to be independent, but because it is linked to the executive, and even judges are appointed by the president, it is not easy for it to be independent. I am not saying this is only for President Bill's era, mm. but that is the, 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 the tradition. Okay. And in most places, even without Sarah Leone, it is also the same problem, right. the appointment of judges. A few other things. He was saying, uh, Kamakwe McKinney wrote, you know, we had some debt, the, the, the machines we are taking, but then they had wanted to complete Lomli, Tokyo Road, and the Hill, by, Hill, Hill, Hill Bypass Road. I, I was coming from a program from the eastern of Freetown. You know, I had to go through Kisi Road, come through Down Street, you know, half of the Hill Bypass Road I was able to navigate through. But how can you meet a, pro, a project that was almost at completion stage, Five years ago, almost five years, you took over this country. You cannot complete that project. The, the, the Lomli Tokyo Road cannot be completed. You went to Kamakwe and took those machines from Kamakwe to a certain road to be constructed around Bond because that is the home of Samura Kamara. He leaves Makeni for Kamalo to Kamakwe. So President Bill took those machines to, to, to a place where they were not supposed to All be. Right. Now let us let, also let, know, let us also quickly, know, quickly. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. There are governments, when you are elected, these are natural disasters, man-made and, uh, and natural disasters. These are things no one can predict. So don't rely on COVID-19 to give us excuses even when you are failed woefully. Okay. We also have similar problems. Ebola, although it was only limited to the sub-region, you may want to put up that argument that COVID-19 is globally mm -hmm. <laughs> the problem, but Ebola is just limited. So let me let me tell you. But even with Ebola in the sub region, we are still able to subsidize for fear. Okay. I went to my village very recently. I bought um, um, fifty liters of fuel, one million fifty thousand. When I used to go to my village around 2018, 2017, it was just three hundred thousand. The APC fuel went as far as forty five dollar per barrel, but to subsidize. We did not allow the people to suffer. Okay. They have failed the people. Let me, if, Femi, let me hear you on law and order, no, the issue of lawlessness. I have Tawa's um, little sermon that he was doing, asking that even if it is seven months. Mm. And I want to make an analogy. I did talk and agree. You go to Aujo, they go one big pot soup. It don't got in it, they flush. Then they can call you, say, Femi, can't shave. Will you share when you know it is got in? So when we are quoting the Bible, we have to keep in mind the environment in which we find ourselves in. Okay. So in terms of law and order, again, for me, it's leading by example. Mm. We're seeing a level of partiality in, during registration process. I would like to know the statistics of how many people were arrested in some areas and how many people were arrested in especially the Western area. Arrested for what? Oh, some of them took um, somebody to verify for them. The, the councillor was arrested. The, the party representatives were arrested. I myself, at Adonkia, uh, registration, at, um, not Adonkia, I remember. They called the cops on, they called police on me. A whole truckload of police came to arrest <laughs> Femi. What was my crime? I was insisting that the people who were being rejected be given rejection slips and appeals form. For that crime, 
a, a, a arrow by the name of Govi, called police. First, it was a, a New England police that came with the intention of arresting me for what crime? When I am insisting on you doing the right thing. That is why I'm saying in the government, there's a head and there's a government. And they are supposed to lead by example. Yesterday, or day before yesterday, I was coming from McKinney and the convoy, I don't know who was in that convoy. Samuel, A, the number of vehicles and the sheer speed. What of the people in the village? What of the safety of the citizens? They do not matter. Nobody cares. What about those going down a one-way street? Mm. Okay, you can say you, want, you don't want the president to sit in traffic. So everybody, speaker not for sit down at traffic, IG not for sit down at traffic, you will see everybody going down the one-way street. But then there was, there, there, there was a particular point in time when the president came out saying, I do apologize for that abrupt break. Um, there. Femi, you were making a submission. So I was, asking, I was asking about, at some point, the president came out with a directive that no, no, no government vehicle should ply with the registration plates covered. The president was even doing on the spot checks with offices, giving a report time for people to report to their offices, including government ministers, and people were embarrassed. And... The, 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 the people you're talking about, whether speaker, minister, they should just follow the normal traffic rules. So the president had come out. I mean, when you see these issues, have you, have you made an effort to, wait a minute, let me call the attention of the police. Who is this minister that has just covered his registration plate? They're all doing it. So many of them, are, even the convoy yesterday, hmm. there were cars without plates at all that were driving at breakneck speed. <laughs> and it's not just to start. What you were seeing then was the honeymoon. Going to offices, check-in. It's the honeymoon. You know my head to do, man, I not be seen. And Honorable Tawa is talking about the supervision. They're not able, are they not able to monitor, to supervise, to see that things are being followed through? Are we pinning this on the presidency? Or should we also pin it on the different arms? Because. If you have parliament, which one of its three fundamental or, or um, constitutional mandate is to perform oversight, and that is not being done. I mean, like you mentioned, the, the president could be told what they want the president to know. They would paint a picture that they would want the president to see, which is different from the realities. But these members of parliament, for example, are elected directly to represent us to correct those wrongs. And also remember, the interview that the president did, where he said categorically, I hired the people I know. He didn't say I hired the most competent <laughs> people who can do the job, regardless of what their political affiliations are. Mm. He said he hires people he knows. So even when we see, as the, uh, um, Menkalu was saying, the audit report mentions specific areas. What have we seen happen to those who forged the receipts? Now, we know the president himself did not forge receipts at hotels. Now, somebody in entourage in Induam, have we seen heads roll? No, we haven't. Scope was suspended. And? Investigated. And? Proven innocent. And resumed his job. And even the one who was threatening to kill people, you remember there was a time Abu Abu was saying that they were going to kill people and blah, blah, blah. He was suspended. A la 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 la, and put back in his job. Meanwhile, we see other issues, other cases that are dragging on, like the plague. The issue of those women who came out when we were supporting Daniel, uh, uh, Diana Konomani, who went to, 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 to headquarters, those women from, women from Kono. Can you believe, Samuel, these women are still coming to court? This December will make the whole issue a year. Why? Why? So if the SLPP government is not able, then, or if they think they have done well, let them take a deep breath and allow the elections and everything to be free and fair. And if they have done well, they will be rewarded with a second term. All right. Um, uh, without arresting all of us. <laughs> Honorable, let me hear you on the issue of lawlessness, law and order. Um,
there's a breakdown. How do we handle that? Let, me, let him talk about the lot in Super Iwala. Let me start with the issue of elections. <laughs> we have seen an unprecedented um, pattern in this president. He announces a date for election like almost a year before the election. But there is no fair about going to the election and allowing the people to decide. You know, there are lots and lots of allegations about oh, voter registration suppression. Centers were opened in every part of this country. In the phases, they were, they were opened. So you cannot say, oh, centers we are open and centers we are closed. If the centers are open for a particular ward, or three centers are open for a particular ward, or particular constituency, depending on the size of the wards in the constituency, the same number of centers we are open in another constituency of identical size and of identical number of wards. So there is no evidence to substantiate some of you would understand because the position of the opposition, like I've told my colleague, honorable member, is always to play the victim's card. Oh, we have been doing this, we have been that. But the point is, we are talking about law and order. And Madam Femi mentioned uh, arrest made during the registration. People were arrested in Omri at Mafa Field. I've had a lot of people made a, a statement about they were not there, they don't know what happened, they were they just on radio, on TV. I've had people well placed. They did not know what happened, what transpired at that time. But let me tell you something, Samir, that will shock you. And for everybody that is around this table, yeah, it's the fact that the people that called me to intervene on people presenting fake birth certificates, under eight people presenting fake birth certificates to be registered at Mafa Field. There were three people arrested. Two were arrested for presenting fake birth certificates that could not be found in any system in this country, that was prepared by somebody at uh, Kamayama, yeah? The other was arrested for obstructing the process of taking these people to the police station to make statements as to where they get or obtain these documents from. So these were the three people that were arrested. Everybody in this country, well placed, called me to interview. I said, it's not my business. It is not my business to intervene. It is an electoral matter. It has to be investigated. And they would have to prove either innocent or guilty. What were they asking me to do? They were asking me to circumvent the process. And I will tell you, people that I've had on interview that will talk about this, they called me. I cannot call names here. But I'm telling you, people in parliament, well-placed, people at, in council, well-placed, mm. people in the opposition, senior members of the opposition, called me, even before I left for the United States. People were calling me. Oh, eh, when I return, colleagues, members of parliament, we are still asking me to go to CID to go and get these people. Actually, it is not my business. I did not know what transpired mm. beyond what I saw, what I had, and what I witnessed. If it was that situation, people were arrested, and you were saying others were arrested elsewhere for such situation. And you expect politicians to intervene. And that has been the status quo. Why am I laying all of these premises to come to your list down of law, law, law and order? It is facilitated by politicians. We cannot shy on away from that. We are the makers and the breakers of the law. Whether you like it or not. I can understand Madam Femi's position. She has never been in government before. She came into politics quite recently. She has been in opposition and she will continue to be in opposition for the rest of her life. It is not a prophecy. <laughs> because it is the way Sierra Leone is designed. Sierra Leone is designed in such a way that the people that we are fighting for, the people that we speak for every day, they are already divided between APC and SLPP, right in the middle. So there is no way a third party would win in this country. Until she joins SLPP or APC? No, I am not saying she should join. <laughs> already, All right. already she is a part, she's part of the APC. Because she is part of the APC Alliance, the COP. So I understand the dynamics, okay. but not to point fingers. Yeah. But the truth is, that is how Sierra Leone is, is, is divided. And that is how other countries are divided. Go to the United States. 
There are other parties, apart from Democrats and Republicans. But these are the two main parties, and they are the two main parties that will continue to win. So the only way she can be in government is to be a member of either of the two parties. So I can understand a position on not being part or party to supporting the bringing down of law and order. But for us that have been in government, myself, my brother here, who have enjoyed governance, you will know that every case in your community, people will come to say, hey, they're going to be picking up my own team. What I will tell them is, okay, it's good. Let me call the investigator. Give me the number of the investigator. Because in every case, there are two sides. So let me see the other side before I intervene. But if you don't intervene, let me tell you what the consequence is. It is a mark, it's an X against you. So we vote are all, lost. The people. They, vote, vote lost. Vote lost. So you are under immense pressure, either from senior colleagues. When I mean senior colleagues, not in the SNPP per se. Senior colleagues, even from the APC, that we are either in parliament together or we are friends, or they know that you are a politician, they are politicians, so you have a, a, a rapport. They will call you to do things that are wrong. That is one part of the, the, the effort mm -hmm. of bringing around that. The second aspect is this. We must try. In as much as everybody is speaking to the same message, we must try as much as possible. Whichever government, including the SLPP, we must try to give the police the independence they so require, or the independence that is so prescribed by the Constitution. So that we have a police force that has the latitude to investigate freely. We have the police force that will make arrests without being told that, oh, you must arrest this person. Because law and order, it, it is not a one stop. It's a process. Okay. Somebody eh, 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 contravenes the law, and that person has to be investigated, invited, and if for any reason, charged to court. So there are processes. President Bill has done his best. I've, I heard my lady say, oh, the speaker, the speaker is protected by the constitution, like members of parliament. So you can write down the one-way speech? He said, when you are going to parliament, okay. as part of your immunities and privileges, when you are going to parliament, for parliamentary city, nobody should stop you in traffic. That is the constitution. My so you can go down the one-way speech? Right. Whether it's a one-way speech okay. or not, my lady, that's the constitution. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's take the final issue. Unfortunately, <laughs> time is dangerously chasing us. But let's let, let's get to listen to what the people think of patriotism and uh, and it's deliberate that we leave it at um, at patriotism to be the last issue um, for tonight. Um, what what do the people have to say? In terms of tribalism, for now we involve the political leaders because it is start from them. Yeah, if they see one political party, they go on the other side. Who side if he say? They don't get support. And begin to say things them, we go separate people. So let me get an organization or a forum inside and engage them political parties them for letting they put stop to that. And let laws then they let them really make laws they put them aside for people or political people is the way they do their thing actively. Because the hard facts that the laws they don't they when you want to you get for check and you get for balance. Because the greater problem can come up from them with leaders. For just gain, they are waiting there one gain for themselves, not so for the people. They are all now one. Now so many as they, because many man keep back to many man. Till the man they back to till the man. So if they begin to choose say one till the man, accept her. Okay. Because okay. and that they bring love. That man when they begin to come marry to, they go ever see many man as possible they uh, encourage him the man. So he go he go do preach and his family say no. Although they speaking and many speaking, but their family accept me as part of them. So if we start for that in, in marriages, in schools, I think that could be to solve the problem. I believe say, we need for dialogue together. Because Papa President Yanda, in Elono we move for solve serious problem. Now me and you and the layman, we will include them in decision making. We dialogue together, we bring out issues. I believe so if we put them together, we will get a better scenario. The leaders, the political leaders, the way they now in position for embrace everybody and preach peace to everybody that we ask them to change, we ask them to call, we can leave collapse. If they see, um, Tim Nima, they married me, they man. But where is it? So, so, so we need for change the mindset. The political system already, you don't, you don't, you don't entrench into the mindset of individual to feel like if my party is not in power, that's the 
the end of my, my life, or that's the end of our political system. All right. Um, so I must caution, we have about eight minutes to round off. Um, so, so, so um, Salia, I mean, it, it, from what we, we, we've listened, it appears that even our, our political orientation has driven away patriotism from us, because all that we see all is red and green. All we think and act is red and green. So how, what, what, what were, were, were the, the, the quick fixes uh, preferred by these um, people um, as to how do we fix and how do we then recollect, go back to activating patriotism? Well, actually, when we talk about that, that was one interesting part. Um, first of all, if I may, you notice in those clips that we've all played today, mm -hmm. unless I tell you, you don't know which part of the country they're from. But I assure you, they come from every single part of the country, although the four places that we mm -hmm. visited, Kono, Makeni, Kenema, and Bo. Every one of them was displayed there in mm -hmm. all the clips. That tells you that, you know, it is, there are issues that we all, right. we're all concerned about. Mm -hmm. And they spoke passionately, just as we have had here passionate discussions, but mm -hmm. with civility. And that was something that we wanted to show people. But yes, I really hope our leaders here can tell us. Because mm -hmm. that was one thing that people were not able to actually pinpoint. put, pinpoint, mm -hmm. and recommend as to, they will tell you why there's no love, why we don't have love for one and another. But they were not able to really come out with recommendations as to how. Why we do can, we lack love for country? What, no, they, why, yeah, why we're not love? They cannot come up with mm -hmm. solutions to to infuse that love. Mm -hmm. How do you infuse that love? It's basically, there's no solution. There's why. They talk about even the construct of Sierra Leone, uh, where how, it, how it is formed and different things that happen in history, um, how certain tribes mm -hmm. were pinned against other tribes who started competing for resources, whether it was at the government level and things like that, how intermarriages only work within certain groups of people, the school system. They, they, they can tell you why, 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 why. But that's one thing that I really want to throw back at the leaders that we have here and the leaders that we will be going around the country and asking mm -hmm. them, asking them, what is the solution? Okay. Because um, that was not actually pinpointed. So I really want to revert to the, the leaders we have here. So today. let's get to hear from them quickly. Um, I'll start off with you, Femi. How do we bring back patriotism? Um, I think there are so many things that have to be put in place before someone can be... Uh, when you're looking at patriotism, we're, we're thinking, how, do we have the building blocks in place mm. for us to become patriotic? For us to look at politics and say, once every four years, we put on our party collars, we elect, we take them off, and we're done. Mm. That doesn't happen. It seems like we are permanently in a political quagmire where everybody is constantly thinking, what you did, what we did, what we could do, it's because of this. And governments come and they put certain things in place, Samuel, that makes it worse. Mm -hmm. They come into office and the first thought is not, are you competent in this ministry, in this institution? They don't wait to check. They first of all get rid of everybody. Fire on a grand scale and then rehire those who are party loyalists or from the same mm -hmm. region. So, and that is a perpetual thing Cycle. that goes on. Mm -hmm. So you, you begin to create that level. From that level, you begin to create the hate, mm -hmm. the discontent, that feeling of do me, I do you kind of thing. Say, they're non kind of power now. They've sacked 200 of us from statistics. They've sacked so many people from here. The, the, the people from here have been retired. People from here have been fired. So we see that happen. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have that as your foundation, you can't build. OK. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me hear from you quickly, the issue of patriotism. How do we instill that? Well, um, for me, my mantra is for God and country. Patriotism is the, um, the devotion, yeah, and vigorous support for one's country. And I have always supported my country. I think in some cases, we have to put our political lenses, you know, and see how we can all dialogue to move Sierra Leone forward. I think that is the dialogue we've been looking forward to and going forward, that is what should be the discussion. But then, my brother here raised a lot of other issues. I just want to throw light on them very briefly. Yes, he was emphatic on the election. Centers were open all over the country. Most centers, you know, did open on time. I want to make it abundantly clear. 
that the, we, have, we are not here to assess the registration process yet. But the challenges, we are too many. In most places in our stronghold, centers did not open on time. In some cases, more than 72 hours before a center could open. Let us know that clearly. There were faulty machines. Even the system was not made to capture those that would be 18 on the, 20, on the 23rd June or so, on the 24th June 2023, uh, except they have to go and readjust the system again. Let us know those challenges, yeah? Now, again, even when the, 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 the provisional results, yeah, we are recently released by ECSL, they are telling us about duplication, okay. 257,123, when they earlier on told us that because of the unique characters, no duplication will take place. They are telling I'm us about uh, 607 on the age. There are many issues, but let me again quick, come to this one, yeah? Quickly, regarding I'm Madam Femi, regarding yeah. Madam Femi, Claudius Cole, I want, I want her to be encouraged that um, the assertion made by Tawa that uh, she will not, never come to power, that is not correct. The analogy about football, <laughs> now, the, the analogy about football, Oligo National Share, she is not in the Manchester United as okay. the SLPP. Honourable you cannot take a player from Honourable another Honourable team, from another team, to be included Honourable in the match. That is Honourable, Honourable, let me hear from you quickly on patriotism. Uh, uh, good, uh, uh, firstly, patriotism, like he said, is honours uh, to country as against personal. Yeah. Let me, in 30 seconds, tell you one faulty patriotic action. In Parliament, you know, I stood up from the government bench, asked for a debate of the Director General's report. I moved a motion. It was Chief by Co that has the guts to second my motion. I was the only one standing and speaking on that motion every day, not a single member of Until when it became political, that was when Dr. Kandi Mikela moved the motion, seconded by the Honorable Assassin's if, like Madam Fer my lady said, the building blocks. The building blocks for the democracy of this country, like the constitution is faulty. It is faulty. 77 one k is not encouraging patriotism. If you were saying, if I lost my political party identity, I am losing my seat. By the way, 15,699 people voted for me normally. That is the margin of 2,699 that I defeated my opponent, the incumbent member of parliament. But for a single action, for loss of party membership, I can lose that seat. So the building blocks, I agree with her, is faulty. So at that time, to round up, at that mm -hmm. time, when my brothers were in power and have 72 members, when they amended section 79 and 80, that led to the fight over speakership and deputy speakership today, had they not amend, amended section 79 and 80, nobody would be fighting for speakership because you know the president will appoint a retired judge to come and be the umpire, a fair umpire. So the point is, we must look at the constitution, the building block, for us to be able to get patriotism right. and national cohesion. Well, thank you. Let me just quickly take a message from a Dr. Fred Lawson, a lawyer who is based in UK, but um, a favorite follower of Goshi. He said, country is over politicized with no meaningful purpose in sight, no amount of conversation, conferences, etc., without relevant action on the ground. By all Sierra Leoneans would make any difference. The society is broken and has been for a long time. Sierra Leoneans have to realize that the hostilities between the various groups and sections of society have to be addressed genuinely. After 60 years, we are now entrenched in a life and death identity war. Who you are and where you belong are now an intractable um, struggle for survival. The blame game is intensifying with no end in sight. One of your panelists explained that in some offices, workers could be seen strolling to work after 9 a.m. Well, that's a story in itself. The building blocks of a progressive society start with the awareness that there is punishment for wrongdoing. In our society, wrongdoing is glamorized with immunity. Lack of law and order coupled with indiscipline and other vices are rampant, with no recourse to accountability and responsibility, except we are prepared to reset these retrogressive behaviors, we are doomed and, res and resigned, designed to hope and um, wishful achievement and development. The 1991 Constitution is another major obstacle in the path of development. It doesn't matter which party is in power. As long as that Constitution is in use, these debates will not end. All right. Um, I want to say many thanks to you gentlemen and the lady. Can we please remind the public? Tomorrow oh. is the last day. Those mm. with rejection slips, tomorrow is your last day. Find your center and go there. Thank you.
Thank you. Many thanks indeed uh, to Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte, to Alfred Minkailu Kuruma, to Salia Fawundo Jr., and Femi Claudius School. It's been a pleasure having all of you here. Um, this program returns next week, same station, same time, with a fresh topic. Many thanks to all of you who watched and followed and uh, participated by sending in your messages. Unfortunately, most of them were political, so I had to let them go and have a decent conversation. Until then, the show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Weisbangura. Up next is our AYV Prime 10 News. Take care of yourself and have a lovely night.